Today's class is called Bizarre Love Crime. So, just a little short, short backstory. I've always been in love with triangles. Maybe my body type works well for them, I don't know. But uh, it was just my thing for years and years and years and years. And I did so many triangles on one side that I basically ended up tearing my labrum in my hip, which is still torn, but that's another story. Um, so, basically, this class is not necessarily going to be triangle setups. Right? I'm sure you guys have probably dealt with lots of triangle setups and understand them. We can go into those on the side at another time if you want to get into that. But I'm basically going to show you how to deal with people defending your triangles. Right? Triangles are one of those techniques that there's been a lot of upsets in jiu-jitsu over the years with triangles. Triangles are very, very... Um, they're a devastating submission, and it's one of those ones that if you're in a triangle, it might be one of the shittiest things that you can be in. Even if you survive, it just sucks, right? So being able to capitalize on the triangle, finishing the triangle, and we might talk about some other you know, things that we can do from there as well, but mainly defending counters to triangles and closing the show. So when you get it, game over, okay? Some of the stuff you guys might have seen before, I'm sure there's some things maybe not um, but I've, after being, I've been almost 30 camps and sometimes there's a lot of flashy shit. It might be cool, but it doesn't do some people any favors long term. So I, all the shit that I teach at these camps is stuff that I really do. I, you're probably going to see some things. Some of you are going to go, oh yeah, he did that shit to me today. Right. Um, I don't, I don't teach bullshit and I don't teach, uh, yeah, I just teach real things that are going to help you be better at jujitsu long term. Not that you can put on the internet. I mean, I do have a couple of those things, but I really use them. So. End of the story, enough of my bullshit talk. So we're gonna get into it. So, and also one thing in this class, this class is gonna be slightly uh, more interactive. So as we go along, if somebody has a specific problem that they deal with triangles, then we can address it, I can help them, and we might be able to help them as a group as well, because all of you guys, Maybe I've trained longer than most of you, maybe not everybody, but I'm sure you guys know some things that I don't as well. So together we can get better than just my dumb ass up here telling you what to do, right? Me. Okay, so first thing. Okay, first, let me ask you this. So what is, what is, what is, what is a common thing, just, just so we can lay a little bit of ground, what is a common thing that happens when you get somebody in a, Maybe not a fully locked triangle, it could be the, you know, the diamond position or a fully locked triangle. What is something that tends to happen? The arm, the arm, the arm out. okay, yeah. One in, one out. I'm sorry? One in, one out. One arm in. Oh, I, I think it meant like one testicle, like you have. <laughs> okay, one arm, one in. Well, that, that, if you don't have an arm in, then you, you don't really have, um, you kind of could have a triangle, but that's not conventional. One arm, one, uh, one in, one out. Wrapping the arm. Posture. You see the mile away. Posture. Posture again. You know different types of posture. Um, how about how about how do how, how is somebody who's been in your triangle got out of a triangle, like a, a locked triangle? Like what is something that they've done that that's like made the thing stacking? Stacking. Slam. Standing up. Smashing, smashing up the lock. Smash like so like spinning hard into the lock. Yeah, that's a common one. You got the. Knee grab, yeah, 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 knee grab, driving forward, but we're going to, and guess what, guys? All these things that you just mentioned, they're in the class. All right. Yeah. Or maybe I just said that because, you know, because you told me already. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. Okay, first thing. When we're talking with triangles, let's say setups, whatever, that's another story. Let's say we're here, okay? Now, what is the first thing in a situation that somebody like this is going to do? Posture. Now, when it comes to posture, posture is harder when the triangle is fully locked. Do you agree? Now, some people really make a big deal, even if the arm is, you know, a lot of people that would teach it like this, you do this, then you sort of do this, right? For me, and this is going to be body type dependent, so if you've got shorter legs or something like that, it might not be the same because longer legs, you can kind of get away with more shit than if you, you have short legs, right? So, me, the first thing that I wanna do 
that's going to make my triangle better and harder to get out is what? Closing the fucking thing, right? If I can close the triangle, it's harder for me to get out and my finishing chances are going to be better. So in a pasture posture situation, Zach is going to be, he's going to be just looking up mainly. The good posture people, you want to lead with your head, right? Now, what's the strongest place that I can grab Zach? If I grab him around his neck, posture. He can still create a lot of posture, is that right? Brown. But if I, I come up around his head, not posture. I can hold it with one hand. It makes it better, the crown, right? What's even better with one hand? This is, you know, if you got like super long arms. One thing, especially sometimes when you sweat and something's involved and you're trying to grab and guys have slipped out. Another situation I like to do, I like to just get around the top of the head. Posture. Right? Posture, Zach. Posture, Zach. <laughs> right? Controlling that. So, he's posturing up. I'm grabbing the top of the head. And I want to try, when that, ha sorry. when that happens, I want to try to close it as soon as possible. Okay? I don't care about the arm, personally. My legs are long enough that most of the time, even if I, I can, I can still get it and lock it. Okay? So we're just going to start this off with, a, with a, that basic posture thing. I know it's nothing substantial, but we're going to start building upon that. Just get your legs moving, get your body moving, get your partner's neck hurting. This is the stuff we want to work on to start, right? So we're going to start in that diamond. And lightly, this is a sparring session, but I want you to give you know, a little bit of resistance. So posture up, and then work on getting the crown of the head and closing the triangle without the arm, if you can. If your legs are this short, maybe not. We'll try. Simple, basic thing. Let's just get into it. Any questions? You're like, what the fuck? This class is basic as shit. It'll we'll get there. I'm gonna say one, two, three, but we don't clap. Clapping's for church. Who's the who's the greatest wrestler of all time? Who? Rick Flair. Rick Flair. What does Rick Flair say? Woo! What does Ric Flair say? Woo! One, two, three. Woo! Do, do them the right way. So when you have a triangle, obviously if we're trying to do it like just without our, um, our, our arms or something doing it, I know it's not always possible if you've got short legs, but if you're over the top of your foot, this is not optimal. You want the, the crook of your knee over your ankle, and you want both toes pulled back. If they're down, they're, this, this calf is weak and everything's weak. When like just that alone makes it tighter. You see on my, my, you want to pull your toes towards you. Just that alone makes it infinitely tighter. You've never seen that. I know that everybody's different levels here. Some people are very, very new. You want triangle there and in a perfect world. Creates a lot of extra force. Um, any questions about, oh, one other thing. So when we're, in the, we're in this, if we're trying to posture and, and there's still a lot of space, posture up. We can, we're trying to bring our crotchal area <laughs> as close, we want as little space as possible. If there's space, it, it's, yeah, he can create more thing. It's not going to be tight. Even if we close it, but, you know, maybe the legs are kind of strong and there's a lot of space. So the more space that we can, so when we're readjusting the triangle, I want to, <laughs> all right, all right, we get it, we get it. <laughs> but I want you to see the point. You're going to remember that now. Next year edit, edit that out, edit that out. <laughs> all right, so we want to fully lock, okay? Any other questions about that before we start moving on down the road? Yes, ma'am. Um, so how much of your leg is like... Um, scooping like their, their shoulder flush or does okay and that's gonna depend if the arm where the arm is because if the arm is turned you're not gonna be able to get as high on them which I'll show in a second so optimally in a triangle situation I want this leg basically like a bar right across their shoulder sometimes like for right now the shoulder is out but I can still close it because my legs are, are long enough but optimally you might if you know if the arm is across I want it like I don't even want to see the shoulder. I can't really see it now. This, this is, this is game over. I mean, this is all game. So, from that standpoint, you want it all the way up. We can talk about that later. And obviously, that's 
end goal, but we're going to start getting into some of the defenses that things that people do, and then which can get you back to this position if you don't have it. Sometimes you might land a badass triangle right from the beginning, and it's just kind of perfect. Other times you have to work, people are going to defend. kind of depends on how good a job you set it up, how, how good they were defending case, case by case. So anything else on that? Well, one question. Let me slow down. Yeah. Um, when you're, when the top guy is posturing, uh, oftentimes I find that they like, you know, push their hands like into your belly or whatever in order, or like chest in order. Like yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very common thing, and I'll show you something I do on that. When I get this, it's the same deal when I'm trying to break posture. So in guard, your legs are the strongest thing you got, right? So, and it's no different in a triangle. So like if I'm here and he's doing the same thing and he's trying to posture up, I like, yeah, I like to do this and I'm pulling in with him, right? Here, and I'm pulling in. It's the same sort of thing here. So if I have the diamond and he postures and he's got two, I might, I might do that, sort of same sort of thing. Now, now it's even, you know, now you've had an arm isolated and I can start going into arm locks or on my plot of options and stuff like that. So if he's got two hands on me, sometimes I, I call it like praying to Jesus and just like, thank you, Lord, you know, <laughs> here inside and then bringing the knees in. And then now I can reinitiate all of that stuff. Make sense? That's just one way. I mean, it kind of also depends. Are they trying to turn? Are they doing anything? Are they standing up? Um, anything else on that before we continue? While you're separating their hands, um, how can you keep them from getting up with, if your hands are not available? Like, they're, they're, oh, like if you're using your hands to like get one arm and one arm out, or if, while trying to hit the triangle? I'm. You know what I'm saying? What you're saying? I, I, I'm not. I mean, generally, we're starting from a position where they have one arm, one out already. Okay. Getting into it, like I said, setups are kind of a different class. I want to really cover the main finishing mechanics of once you kind of got them heading down that path, how we can finish it. Okay. But if you have questions later about like maybe a certain position that's not kind of what we're talking about, I'm happy to help anytime. Okay. And I'll help you guys all week. And guess what I won't do? Ask you for money. I'm here. So if you need anything okay. from me, please ask me. <laughs> People do that, I think, though, right? Some people I won't. Okay, so what is it? What is somebody you guys mentioned before? What is another thing that people do? What, what do you guys want the next one to be? Stack. stack. What's that? Okay, so one common thing that people try to do to stack is um, the thing is, he right I'm right in line in front of him, right? If he wants to stack me, he can literally just roll me straight up here, right? Go back. So one thing in a stack sort of situation that I like to do. Um, so a, a lot of times I had some really um, big MMA fighters, like guys fighting the UFC and stuff that I'm getting triangles. And a lot of times guys would, not only they like to stack, but they would also stack me up. They would also try to throw this arm across and, it, and or they put it like here and then stack me up. And then it, it's, hard to, it's hard to keep the triangle there, right? In a situation like that. So I'm gonna kind of cover two things at the same time here. So he's stacking me. A lot of guys always want to put that arm across. Yeah, this sort of stack, because this is weak. My hips start getting weak once he turns. Yeah, yeah, that's hard for me to hold it to. It goes against the lot completely. So one thing, if I, I feel like the, I'm doing a triangle on somebody big, or I feel that the stack is going to come, one thing that I like to do, a couple of different things. A, if I feel like they're going to throw the arm across, I'll, I'll immediately come up and, and hit him with this paw, right? This paw grip. So if he tries to, to run me up like that, I might start shuddering away. So he can't stack me, right? So not only that, or I can, if he tries to stack me, I can also square up to him and walk my shoulders back. So you have a couple of different options depending on maybe how they're doing it. But the main thing that I found, the combination of all these things, so if I feel like he's doing that, I might initially shut him down but if they're strong, they still might be able to start rolling me up. I will then try to open, I'll open it up and try to turn the corner. Now, sorry, I'm loosening it up so I don't die. put dude to sleep here. <laughs> so I'll do this and then I'll push down. Because even, even if I'm not pushing down, 
he can't really stack me from this position. All his energy is like that way, and I'm in control now. And not only that, as I have an angle, to, I can really finish hard from here. And I, a lot of times I'll knock guys down. Now you're in trying arm bar land, or both of them. So I'll show you again. So what we're going to do on a stack situation is we can practice a couple of different ways. We can practice, unless I got it locked, he's trying to roll me back. You can practice just shoulder walking. And then he's not going to just wheelbarrow you forever. I mean, some people might, but generally they'll stop. And then once they stop, you can start adjusting or trying to finish how you normally would. But we're going to have some other options as well. So we got that. Or if I feel like they're trying to stack me and roll me up in this sort of, yeah, this sort of thing, some guys will do this. Or try to thrust choke you. Sometimes guys will try to do this sort of thing. I'll, I'll check the end. I'll check the arm, slow them down, and then I might try to adjust and or grab the leg. And when I'm doing this, I'm kind of extending that way and it's pushing that energy down and not into me. Because if I'm up like this, not a good finishing position. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can try it two ways. This is a stack portion of the program. So if they're trying to stack and come into you, check the arm, and then you might have to shoulder walk away. Or that second one, you can sh simply, I mean, it's, I mean, Zach's a lot bigger than me, so it kind of depends, but you can just kind of keep your hands square, and you start stacking, and you just start shoulder walking. And they'll kind of get tired of following you, so at some point, they'll stop, and you can, you can. yes, sir? The, the, which one? Yeah, the arm check. Yeah, I had this really big, this one dude, he was like a really big judo dude. He used to do this to me all the time. It was his escape, and he, like the first few times, like he got, got out because he was fast. As soon as I got him on a triangle, he would immediately just whip this thing, and it was like, oh shit, it broke out. But then I got wise to him. He got away with that like one time. So I got him again, immediately just checked. And then when I checked this, look at his momentum is making it so I can put it tighter now. Now, if I feel like he's still stacking me, sometimes I'll grab this leg. I can, I can grab my leg and then finish it here. Or I can roll him onto the side, finish it from there. Now I'm in triangle, get arm locks in play. So redirecting that force not only helps you make a triangle tighter because it's getting a good angle to finish it, but that stack now becomes less a problem for you. So, but if you do that and they're bigger, one thing I will add when you do push them out, sometimes you might have to hold on to that leg because if they're real big, even if you got everything, they still might, you know, they might pop it out. So sometimes I'll hold it until like the angle's perfect and then I'll finish. Any questions? No questions? One, two, three. Woo! Yeah! Come on, guys. One, two, three. Woo! Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Is, uh, is everybody getting this okay? Is there any problems with this right now? Nothing. Everything everything makes sense? There's a couple bigger guys. Yes, sir. Um, when I'm diving in for the legs, I, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm milky and, and the, the grip is slipping, but the grip ends up slipping on like, the lock. Um, when you're, when you're going to dive and change the angle, yeah. you need to go up and... and and oh, okay. so see, you, yeah, because here's what happens. Normally, in, when you're in the front, you got hands on the head, right? But when you're doing this, you got to release one of the hands, and it could be a potential thing for them to posture. So instead of, as we discussed before, trying, you know, we're already kind of like locked at this point, right? So this one we got it locked. So instead of using this, he's trying to stack me up. I'm doing this here. When I grab this, this a lot. This is my posture now. Posture. Up. This turns into the posture. Because now I need my hands in play to do other things because he's trying to get out. So, yeah, if I'm just here and I don't have anything, any postures, yeah, especially with the angle change. If I'm, if I'm here, it's not even locked, it's posture. You can, you can hold it. Is that an answer? answer that? Yeah, there were some big guys back here and they had bigger legs and the other guy he was going on was really big. You gotta try to get, you know, that shoulder out. And I know, 
there's going to be varying levels of how deep you get the triangle lock. If you got really long legs, really short legs, the person you're dealing with is looks like a refrigerator with a head on it. it could be harder, right? But that's why there's platas and arm bar. Like there's all these things are always available. These techniques to triangle the whole plot of the arm bar, they're called the three brothers because when one brother's around, the other ones are probably close by, right? Um, so any other questions about that before we? Yep. Um, so uh, when you're doing the shoulder block, are yep. you inverting or are you just grabbing the shin because you're hoping to pull them down to the side? No, I, I, normally in this situation, I'm kind of doing a couple things at once. I'm blocking that, but that also gives me the ability to get the leg and change the angle and get more of that shoulder out, which makes the lock tighter. Yeah, so in a perfect world, if I was doing it, let's say I kind of have it locked and you're starting to stack me up, I'm here, I'm gonna open it, and see when I do this, there's shoulder in, right? So hit, just hit, him doing this kind of solves all my problems for me. Now the shoulder's out and I can take him down to pound time, as they say on the streets. <laughs> um, does that answer that? Yeah. I I just feel like because I have smaller legs, I, I might need to like, kind of invert. Yeah, so if you got if you're shorter legs, you need probably a little bit more torque to get more of that shoulder out. Um, just gotta try it. The more the more you do them, you start kind of okay. This is how much I need, and, and it's gonna depend a bit on the person. No gi, you know. Sometimes in the gi, you have material and stuff in the way that kind of takes up some of your space. But no gi is usually, but because it's slick, you can put it on faster. But because it's slick. Sometimes I can get out. I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Okay. So, what's the next one? Hiding the arm. Hiding the arm. God dang, I'm happy you asked that. Because I get to do one of my... I'm a bit of an asshole sometimes. Like, not purposely, but like, if I can do a good technique, and it's sort of like a, bit, a little asshole -y. It's like a win-win, you know what I mean? <laughs> it solves the problem, it releases frustration. So a couple of things. So let's say you might not have it all the way locked, right? But I do because I was genetically gifted with these lips. <laughs> They're not that long. Just, so he's here hiding it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, of course you can try to dig in here and start doing like, you know, this sort of thing, or you know, you can do this and then go to like a there's, there's lots of things you can do, but we already established that we're going to do something that's a little asshole, you know what I mean? So he's here. I like to do this. Forearm goes up, goes on the head, pushes open, fist, Aye. comes in here. I grab, I think it's, the, you'd have to ask the referee, but I think that you have to grab the gi when you do this, even though it doesn't matter. I had a guy tell me that, you didn't grab the gi, and I said, I ran it back into the same exact thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> long, a long time. It was pretty fun. Though. So, Dax here trying to tuck his head. I'm here. Head comes open. Fist of power. My mom's favorite technique. Fist of power. <laughs> she comes in here. It goes onto the neck, right on the side, the carotid artery. This hand. Magic. It pulls it in. And then everything gets tight, and I just tighten it all up. And if, the, and if you don't get the tap, Usually what ends up happening, guess what? That arm comes out. So he goes, he's starting, oh yeah, and then I can do all whatever other stuff. But generally, because of how I already established how I am, I'll just hold on to this as long. Even if the arm comes out and he's posturing on me, I'll just hold on to it. No, I'm getting shit, you know what I mean? You're not getting away that easy. Can't so, confirm. What's that? It's a can't confirm. Can't, yeah. It happened last time. I did it just to a couple guys today. I'm not going to put you on blast, but there was a couple guys that got this to it. Yeah. <laughs> You're adding more of a fulcrum to the, the choke point on this. Yeah, so basically what's going to happen, so he's got the thing. Now, sometimes got, if a guy was born with no neck, and there's a few guys in here that were born without neck. <laughs> it's a thing. So it, you, you need a little bit, so I'm going to answer your question. So I want to open up whatever neck is available. Now, chef's kit, right there. <laughs> Grab it by the thing. Put it right on the neck, and then I want to. I'm I'm holding this, so you know if he, he can't move away, so I can anchor. And then I'm pushing, pulling, and then I'm flexing my, my stuff right up here. Just like the same when you do a trial, but maybe with a little bit less. Uh, 
sexuality. <laughs> okay, Spike. One more time. Then we're going to cover one that I got asked five times in the last thing. I wanted to save it. So we're here. Grab, boom. You're locked in. Tap. If he, if he takes the arm out, I'm going to do it anyway. Or, or you can do your normal triangle stuff. And then maybe put it back there. <laughs> Has everybody got it? Hey. hey, I need a beer. Um, any other questions about that? What if you don't have your feet? You it's the same. You're just not grabbing the thing. Maybe put a more punch in it, right? Because you don't have to grab the gear. You just lick your hand, whoosh, put it in there, <laughs> cinch it down. So no, it doesn't matter. No gi. It's the same thing. So we're here. No gi. I open it up. I just put the hand in there, and it's exactly the same. No difference. Except you don't. But the thing that's sweet about this is technically you're supposed to grab the gi, but because their neck and their ugly face is in the way, the referee, you know, might or may not see it. So your mileage may vary. <laughs> One, two, three. One yeah. thing, like the, in a perfect situation, you might not always get it because of the posturing I showed these guys back here. But just like any choke or anything, the more of all your muscles and your core and everything that you can recruit into this, the harder it's going to be to get out, posture, and it's going to make a tighter thing. So like when I get it, I'm just here laughing, and I just push here, he can still kind of posture. But if I curl into him, it just makes it all tighter, and it's less flex so he can absorb some of the choke. The fist. So everybody's got that pretty good. Maybe you've seen that before, maybe not, sorry. I just had a question. Sure. Is that one more um, pain compliance versus uh, actual so. choking? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it was more painful. And no, so I didn't know it, if I was doing depending it on where you get it, yeah. you know, if you get the carotid, it'll put this, I've seen a lot of people get okay. put out. But, you know, if you slide it down on the throat a little bit, you can do that too. But yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, they're going to be kind of writhing around trying to get out of it. But if they, do you care? Yeah. And all your teammates in, in, the, in the training room, like, yeah, I'm a badass, you know. Do you, uh, yeah, this one, yeah. Oh, sorry. Do you crunch the person into your fist or do you extend? No, no, I, I want, I want, I'm trying to. Hold them in. Okay. Oh yeah, I want to. I want them to feel all of my fury. Okay. You know? <laughs> but and, and if for some, if that arm comes out and it starts getting in your way and posture, go into another triangle. You know, a standard triangle finish. This, I swear to God, every time I train jujitsu, somebody gets this. And you don't have to. I mean, you can do it like softly. I mean, you don't have to. You know, you can depending. You know. How you feel inside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got two more, and we only got time for one, so we're going to have more. Um, some of these guys were doing this before. So, a um, couple of things. There's one sometimes, this, this one here, where guys start to do this, and they want to push this to the ground. Who's seen this one before? And I defend this the same way that I defend knee cuts, which is, when they do this, I'll come under here, I'll just stop. I'll either stop my own arm, leg so they can't put it to the ground, or I cup under their arm. It's, it's pretty simple. I, I don't get that. This one doesn't bother me. So if they try to put it to the ground, I put it here. They need this knee to be on the ground for them to finish. Yeah, without that, it, it, it doesn't work. So just cup it. Same situation if somebody's knee cutting me. And I'm here. They need this knee kind of to be on the ground, right? Here. It's the same sort of deal. I'm just blocking them from being able to put it on the ground and follow through. Same deal. Oh, not today, pirate. And then I can finish it here. Doesn't bother me. If they sit back? That's weird, bro. <laughs> it sits back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lean back. Lean back. Yeah, well, if, if you're doing a good job with your posture and he's trying to sit back, sit back. Sit back, Gene. Yeah, like yeah, if he sits back, guess yeah, what I'm going to do? Guess what? He's sitting. Guess where we are? We're back in that same position we were a minute ago. And now I got his leg, and he can't. Now he can't get out of posture. Yeah, I'll just. If you're, if you're doing a good job at keeping your heels to your butt, you're not ballerina feet around with trying. <laughs> you're here. It's going to be hard for him to sit. Even this alone. Look. Come here. Sit back, guys. Sit back. Sit back. You gotta work in the curls, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If you if you if you've got your heels locked in right and you're not ballerina feeding, that sit back thing. Maybe. I don't know. So that's how you answer that. That's not very complicated. We can drill it, or I can show you the uh, the other mean mother trip. Um, what's that? Can we see the next one? You didn't like that one. I was like, no, that's Other side? So, this is how you stop that. He puts a hand down, just underhook your leg. It's really that simple. It's not that complicated. But even here, like, he's, he's created. Now he's, like, even brought himself closer to me so I can make sure tight and nice as well. So that's, for those of you who asked me that, that's kind of how you do it. So, and one of, I'm surprised that somebody showed me this, but he's a black belt, so a fellow professor who know a, 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 a true trick of the trade here. <laughs> oh, he's fine bunch. So, another time that would happen sometimes is you're trying to finish a triangle. Let's say, I got it. So, there's space here, right? Is space your friend? No. Where the triangle is not. So, sometimes, you know, you guys have been taught like the head pull, but all that space is there, you have to take that space up and then maybe you can kind of get it and you know, like, oh, that's more of a crank than a choke. You know, you get that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you've never heard that one. <laughs> so what I like to do, if there's space like this, I like to turn the head, pull it in. So now his chin is, my hamstring is on his neck, and now there's no space. Now I can fade him away. Hmm. So here we got space. His posture, I'm trying to break it, I can't. He's already, he's already got it. Turn the head, pull it into the leg. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy just saw. You saw great, great, great grandpappy. <laughs> Here, we can't get it. Maybe he's, he's doing the, he's on the posture. I can't get him. Turn it to the leg. And look at your boy's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's seen that before? Ah, I got you. Yeah, he you knows. He knows. He's a, he's a, he's a <laughs> second degree for life. Well, he taught him. Um, try that. Shit. Any other questions about that? Aaron, One, two. Oh, yes. Are you just turning it with the. I want. I'll, the header. Yeah, I'm, I'll grab them both. Turn it into the. So they're instead of their chin pointing right down to your gooch, their chin is pointing like. <laughs> You turn it right into the leg, and then just a standard triangle finish. You know, but you're kind of redirecting into the leg. You'll see, like, when you, you have a lot of space there sometimes. If it's not 100% perfect, especially if they're kind of posturing. Once you turn it in the leg, it turns into a whole different game. Is it kind of like a side finish? Yeah, I like, like that, that same posture, top of the head, because, again, if the neck, there's some big guys. Well, I've had it locked in, and I think I got it like on the top of the neck, and it's pretty. And they just go, <laughs> like, "Whoa!" But here at the crown, it's harder, and it can be slippier, slipperier. So sometimes I'll, I'll kind of maybe kind of gable grip the thing, or where I showed you with my arms. That you got to play with. That's gonna somebody got a little peanut head, a greasy peanut head. A lot, you know, dreadlock man, white guy with dreadlock man. You know what I mean? <laughs> All of them. So it's gonna depend. Uh, let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Woo! Reach up. Grab behind everything. Squeeze. Squeeze. <laughs> Y'all in the back. That's where, a little bonus. Squeeze there in your room for that. What's that? Like where? Where's the like direction of the squeeze? Oh, your your leg scissor in them basically. Okay. Like that pro wrestling, that arm in and that leg scissor is just. And that one you might have to kind of adjust it and get the space out of it a bit. But if you can get it, it's like, 
You know what a nutcracker is? <laughs> you're, you're basically doing a nutcracker on it. But instead of using tree nuts, you're using your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a little underslept. Yes, ma'am. The, the always that the closer your head is to the crotch and the less space, the less problems you're going to deal with in general. And the tighter the triangle is going to be. And the tighter the triangle is, the less problems you're going to have. The quicker you're going to be able to finish them. In a perfect world, it just comes on quick. Your arm goes across. Sometimes it lands that way. And other times, you know, guys are going to start trying to posture in and, and do different things. Um, I hope that some of the stuff that we show you guys, like you, you oh, I'm sorry, yep. Um, so could that be a, a main technique or is that a backup technique? The TP? Uh, yeah, that, that one. Oh, you, yeah, you can send it anytime you want. Okay. But like when you, when you do that, I mean, it's like sometimes if it's kind of halfway set, it's not set. TP is one of those things where I kind of can't close the triangle and I'll just do it. If it's like super loose, I mean, you don't want to do it unless, again, you want that head as close as possible because all the power is close to your hips. Knees, it's like a nutcracker. It's more powerful towards the top of the hinges, right? Right. Not the, the, so you want it. But yes, you can do that. Okay. And of course, if the arm is wrapped, you can do the bolt cutter and switch the triangle to the other side. We can go on and on. We only had enough. Any other questions before we move along? And Rich is going to come in. I hope you learned. I hope. Be honest. Are your triangles no better than they were before? Put your hand up if you're like you didn't learn anything. <laughs> Peace, bullshit. Well, thank you guys for uh, showing up. We'll take one quick photo, super, super quick, and then. Um, that's it. So thank you. Thank you.